What's going on family? Welcome back to Israx Movie Reviews. And today I'm really excited to go back in time and uh, give you a review on one of my favorite movies of all time. And this is the original Wesley Snipes led Blade uh, back in 1998. This movie is just, I think a revolution has started, man. Back in 98, this was one of the first comic book movies uh, we've gotten. And what I loved about the movie was it was rated R. Uh, as it should be, especially uh, you know, coming f you know coming from what it was, it was kind of a slasher about vampires. You understand what I'm saying? And Wesley Snipes, I think, kicked ass. I've been it's been so long that, that since I last watched this film. Um, I think I watched it when I was about 11 years old back in '98, and I remember when I first saw it, I was like, God damn, this movie right here! Uh, oh my god. You know what I mean? When I first saw it, I thought this movie was awesome. Watching it as a kid, uh, you really don't know how much or what you're seeing exactly. All you know is that Wesley Snipes was a straight badass. Um, but now, as I'm older, about to be 36, you really know how much of a badass uh, Blade really was. And a lot of people don't even realize he came straight from the comics. Yeah, we have the Mahersha Ali movie coming out. Whenever it's going to come out, uh, that's in production hell pre-production hell but as you get older you realize that he does make a stand he does make a point uh wesley snipes will always embody blade and what i loved about the movie was it's one of the most i think one of the more accomplished takes on a vampire movie basically that's what it is a vampire movie and it's about you know vampire trying to really uh, take over the world it's in that genre and even to this day, uh, you have your different incarnations of that. And this one was spectacular. Um, the blood flows very proportionally in this film. I think Blade uh, is not only strong, very witty. It's a mature comic book film uh, with outstanding performances and a unique visual style. Does the movie hold up today? I think it does. Aside from the special effects, the special effects obviously were a little cartoony then. But I think, you know, Stephen Norrington, uh, I, I think was the man, you know what I mean? Um, being a part of The Crow, which is another review in itself. I'm saving myself for that one because that's very similar uh, film to this one in feel. Um, but I remember the release of Blade based on, you know, the Marvel comic character is, I think, one of the best comic book movies in general you know it arguably led to the most recent trend of comic book movies out here you know what i mean it's success along with x-men right after that um spider-man right after that one you know caused people to do something that they've always have you know take on the comic book genre and take it in a very serious serious art form and a medium for storytelling a lot of people like um Spielberg and other great directors have beef, have problems with Marvel movies because they get so much attention and deservedly so, but you can't hate on uh, Marvel, you know, even though they've been, you know, recently, I'm not going to say they're out of it, but, you know, recently the movies haven't been that well, but I think they're going to pick up eventually. And this film is incredible, going back to it. You know, it's a very gothic style kind of ride just like the crow was with great performances like i mentioned before it's very unique in its visuals i really haven't seen a movie like this to this day honestly um the crow and and, and this one they stand out because of their unique visuals and their visual style and stefan norrington definitely puts his foot in this movie you know and this movie should see should be seen if it had, wasn't seen already by the f any fan of action, horror, or just film in general, uh, just to see Wesley Snipes as a half human, half vampire. You know, his mother was bitten while pregnant and his blood was infected by the vampire virus. That's how he obviously gets his power, granting him some vampire-like powers, such as this inhuman strength. Um, although he suffers from the thirst, right? The blood, um, the vampire's natural need to feast on human blood which he really doesn't do thanks to him combating that thirst using treatments and, and different potions and serums 
almost kind of like a drug addict, you know, by his mentor Whistler, who's played by Chris Christopherson, uh, who's awesome in the role. I've always been a fan of him um, outside this film and just his dynamic and chemistry with Blade in this film, with Wesley Snipes rather, I think was awesome. You know, they spend the nights hunting and killing vampires who feed on humans. And I like the way they go back and back. You know, you have Whistler who makes the weapons and who treats Blade, right? Uh, making sure he doesn't die or feast on other people, right? And then you have Blade who carries out missions for him. So they have this father-son dynamic and I love the chemistry throughout the film. You can tell they really feed off of each other in that way. And at the same time, you know, you have Stephen Dorff in this film who over the years has become a straight up douchebag uh, but he was actually really good in this film as Deacon Frost uh, you know his job is basically to plan to overthrow the noble heads of this vampire clan and using them as sacrifices to bring out La Magra uh, you know this uh, vampiric blood god to destroy basically humanity and man he's I think awesome in this film his dynamic with Blade is second to none. And regarding the film just in general, besides the characters, because Wesley Snipes, Chris, Christopherson, um, basically to me, the, the main stories besides, you know, Stephen Dorff. And I got to shout out my wife, you know what I mean? Sana Oh, uh, even though she doesn't have a major, major role in this movie, but she plays the mother of Blade. And um, we do see her in the beginning, and then we do see her in the ending of this film. Uh, she's just gorgeous. I just love anything that she's in. Um, the the film is it's truly dark and gritty. I love that. And very gothic. Um, Norrington's direction set. Uh, very ominous. Very cold, chilling. You know, deadly mood. And the visuals are so well crafted. The cinematography in this film is something that I enjoy and I love to see in film. It's actually one of my favorite things about the, the film. Um, besides the score by Mark Isham which is tragic and has a lot of uh, melancholy moments with some nice techno uh, and action music thrown in uh, for good measure. Uh, even though the beginning, the way this movie starts out, amazing. Um, the acting, I think is generally, like I said, really good in general, and it meshes quite well. The action obviously is nice. Uh, it doesn't feel staged in my opinion. Uh, they go for this it's like every punch lands and actually does land. The movie holds up to a certain point, right? We got a little uh, spoiled recently with the John Wick movies and the new, basically, action movies of this day where, you know, they use that gung fu and stuff like that and they, they fight very differently. Um, but in this film, it looks like the stunts were actually done by Wesley Snipes, majority of them at least. And um, I gotta mention, this movie is, is it's a violent film, which, I love it's one of the bloodiest of the three movies in this trilogy and it has a lot of gore you know that carnage candy uh, it actually almost took me out of the movie a few times but not in a in a negative way i was like shit you know what i mean but it could have been more gory as you can tell they use the juice corn syrup or whatever it is there's blood in a lot of scenes but then there's that other aspect of the you know ch cheesy car cartoonish kind of uh, special effects and what's crazy about this movie is it blurs that line between serious and campy, which I thought was really, really good to do with a movie like this. Because if it was too, too, too hard, um, I think it would have probably went off the rails, especially at that time back in 98. In addition, there are a couple of scenes and jokes that stick out to me like a sore thumb. Uh, it's kind of mixed. It's kind of a mixed aspect. And the tone can be a little too oppressive at times. But making this movie, you could tell, was hard. Not a lot of films, um, especially this being the first of its kind, could pull something like that off. And uh, I actually enjoyed it. You know, I gave this movie an 8 out of 10. Uh, I recommend this movie to all fans around the world. If you a strong vampire, horror, action, Wesley Snipes fan, this movie is for you. Also, this movie has a lot of kind of like pre- matrix kind of themes to it you know what i mean they utilize that that bullet time thing that cool trick when the action slows down um dramatically to, to the point where you can see the individual's bullets going through the air slows down dramatically goes points where you can see the individual um 
kind of ducking and stuff like that. So the Matrix did definitely didn't invent that trick. They definitely got it a few years later. Um, but um, this movie was definitely stylish, dark, and gritty. You got to go check this movie out. It's, it's one of those movies where I've watched again and again and again and in sequels. And don't get tired, you know. X-Men was right after this. And, you know, obviously you got the Spider-Man films right after this. And if you're going to adopt a good comic book, this was the blueprint. So definitely go check this out. Eight out of ten. Look forward to seeing you guys on my next review, man. Till the next time. Deuces.